Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Educational Grain Commodity Marketing School video series. This video series is being brought to you and sponsored by DeKalb Brand Seeds to educate producers across Canada about grain commodity marketing. Well, today in our ninth video series, we are going to look at uh, uh, your cost of production, understanding those inputs, those variable fixed costs. Why is it important? What really does it matter at all? Should we spend some time on it? And I think we should, and let, let's go through it. So, uh, budgets on a per acre cost basis are a powerful tool for assisting farm management. A listing of inputs and prices helps estimate how much operating capital is needed for production. An estimate of the per bushel cost of production is useful in making effective marketing decisions as well. So we're gonna go through some of these costs and then we'll, we'll come up with a, a, a corn example where we go through some of the revenue and the profit potential um, here in the past couple of years both in 2000 and 2011. So a grower's return is equal to the price times the yield. Yield will ultimately determine what that break even is ultimately what your profit will be but it's price times yield minus cost. When calculating costs there are variable and there's fixed costs. Cash costs involve actual cash transactions. Non-cash costs include expense items such as depreciation, which are not associated with an actual cash transaction. Variable costs increase or decrease as use increases or decreases. Fixed costs remain constant as use increases. So in this uh, example here with this chart, you can see that the, here's your total cost, there's your variable costs that tend to go up or down depending on use and then there's your fixed costs that are constant. Variable costs include a fuel, seed, fertilizer, herbicides, equipment repair, hired labor. Fixed costs include insurance, property tax, and self-employed labor. So let's go to an example here. This is a tool we've created here at Farms.com Risk Management. Uh, in this example, I'm just using John Doe Farms. Uh, this is April 6 of 2011. This is a good example of today's corn producer where in 2011 he has to figure out what that cost of production is because he's thinking okay with prices where they are today in the 645 650 per bushel off December can I actually make money at these prices well historically you know you can but let's go through that example so in this example I'm using 540 acres is what I'm going to plant I'm going to assume we got to assume a yield so I'm going to assume a yield of 180 per bushel now you can use your guaranteed bushel yield revenue insurance bushel yield you can use an average you can use a high High yield, a 180 would equate to a pretty high yield in any given year. Whether you're in Western Canada, Ontario, or the United States, although the United States can produce some higher yields, including uh, the, the rest of the country. You, you then have to apply a seed uh, on a per acre basis. Uh, what's that seed cost? Uh, you're going to apply fertilizer, and then you're also going to apply some crop chemicals. These are your uh, uh, farm direct expenses or variable cost, part of your variable costs. Um, we then have to apply planting, part of your tillage, cultivation per acre, chem app, fertilizer app. Um, and again, if you own some of the equipment when it comes to planting and cultivation or combining, you can add a, instead you can add a custom rate or you can add a depreciation rate. It, it's totally up to you. Um, we then have to add hauling and trucking, uh, crop fuel and oil repairs. There's drying fuel. Uh, I remember in 09, late 09, we had some really high costs in drying fuel. Then we got our utilities and marketing expense if there is one to arrive at total variable costs. Okay, then we get into overhead expenses. These are largely your fixed expenses. And the, the first one is land rent and interest. If you're a uh, younger farmer that uh, owns a lot more debt, then you're going to have to put in um, you know, what maybe that interest cost is on that land, or maybe you're renting that land. So what is that land rent? Uh, there's maybe a machine lease in there somewhere along the lines. If, if you're you know, maybe leasing the equipment instead of owning it, there's some real estate taxes, hired labor. Apply a labor to yourself as well. Um, I mean, you still got to send the kids to, to school and you got to feed and you got to feed yourself. Uh, there's storage, some storage costs, interest on operating loan, there's crop insurance and then there's other expenses like phone, car, depreciation and then maybe some miscellaneous costs and you arrive at total fixed costs. We can then arrive at a 
total fixed and variable cost. In this case, we got 611.35 per acre. And our break even based on the yield in acres is $3.40. If I sell today off December 2011, including basis at $5.50 a bushel, I get a net profit of $2.10 per bushel or $378 per acre. In any given year, if I can achieve $100 per acre more uh, profit-wise, that's a very good year. This is an exceptional year. In fact, those producers who still have corn bushels in the bin for 2010 are probably achieving even higher pr profit per acre numbers because they're selling potentially corn at $7 or better. Now, we can get some free cost of production tools to help you guys out. Uh, let's start with Western Canada. Western Canada, you can go to the viterra.ca uh, website. Uh, we've provided the link here. Just click on that link and away you go. And um, remember, when you're using these tools or uh, cost of production tools uh, that are available for free on other websites, um, they provide some averages across the board. Please don't use those averages as your cost of production. Make sure you go through the math and you do your own because everybody has a different cost of production. In Ontario, you can go to OMAFRA, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food and Rural Affairs. There's the link. The first link provides you some background on cost of production, just like we've done today. And then the second link, it goes into individual um, uh, tools, cost of production for corn, beans, and so on and so forth. And then in the United States, uh, we found this uh, great, uh, sorry, th this great um, Kansas State University Ag Manager website and it provides some great information for US producers there's the link there uh, so how, if when you get a chance just to visit the, that as well uh, so in summary knowing your cost production managing your inputs variable and fixed costs are important markets don't care about your cost at the end of the day but you should because it uh, you can actually wrap a marketing plan around that cost or that break-even uh, so that way you have an idea when you can pull that trigger it's essential because it can help you make better and smarter marketing decisions. In our next video series, we're going to look at fixed four contracts and why they should be part of any marketing plan. Thank you for spending some time with us today. We hope that we have shed some light and insight into cost of production and how you can use this information to become a more successful marketer. We look forward to seeing you next time. Till then, thanks for watching.